This is Candid Opinion, the award-winning program which brings you the frank statements of personalities involved in important issues. Now, here is your moderator, Ralph Price. Hello, everyone. Our guest tonight is native Savannian Johnny Mercer, uh, three-time Academy Award-winning uh, lyricist. I believe that's the correct pronunciation. Well, that's a fancy name for it. Um, you're home for the holidays, I believe. Yeah, Ralph. How I'm long can we uh, expect your company, your... Uh, I'm about to leave. I've been here a couple of weeks, and I think it's just about time for me to move on, as the song says. <laughs> I love Savannah, and uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. I'd like to stay longer, but I don't want to outwear my welcome. I don't think you could do that, because you, uh, your uh, good works precede you quite often on the radio and uh, other ways. Thank you. One thing that uh, a lot of people uh, wonder about when they think of uh, writing songs. Now, do you, you write the lyrics? Uh, do you, in all cases, get to hear the music first, or are you ever called on to uh, come up with the lyrics that will be, will be put yeah. in the music later? You mean, which comes first, the words or the music, huh? The chicken or the egg. <laughs> that's usually, that's the first question most people ask. I guess it's the one they're most interested in. Well, 95% of the time, the music is presented to me, and I fit the words to it. Uh, once in a while, I have to do it the other way. Give a guy a complete lyric or a title, and he works from that. Lots of times that happens in writing a show. But most of the time, the fella gets the best tune he can to fit a situation or just to, it sounds like a hit song to him, and I come up with the proper words if I can find them. Well, now, you uh, did the lyrics for uh, the Broadway show Little Abner that yeah. was later made into a movie. Uh, what was the case uh, with that production? Well, that was, uh, a lot of that was taken from the comic strip. We had conferences about that. The writers presented me with lots of uh, titles and ideas for lyrics, awfully good ones too, which a lot of which I used. And then we'd go over it with the composer, and he'd uh, say, "Well, I think this is the kind of tune that needs here." He might be working to a title or just blank, and he'd bring the tune into me, and I'd sit down and work out the uh, the words. We knew we were going to have a song called Jubilation T. Confoon, so he wrote a tune that was easy for me to. Uh, to write a comedy, a structure, like a four-line joke and then a little chorus that followed it, which we thought was right, and I think it turned out pretty well. Now, uh, you get uh, the music first in this case. Uh, you, you've uh, worked uh, in collaboration, I believe, most of your major works in the uh, last few years have been with uh, Henry Mancini. Now, uh, in, in every case, has he come up with the uh, music first, or has he adapted uh, Every Music song we've your... every song we've written, he's uh, he's written first. Every tune, he's print, given me the tunes, and I've had to, you know, write the uh, the lyric to them. You've indicated that uh, you may do a major work with him sometime in the future. Well, I'd like to be? do one. Well, you see, he's so busy now. He's uh, he's really at the top of his stride, like in, in his as a as as far as his career goes. He's uh, a conductor, and he goes around uh, not only this country but the world doing concerts with Andy Williams and by himself. He plays colleges, auditoriums. He has two or three television shows. He arranges for almost every movie that's made. He gets first call. He's in that much in demand. So it's kind of hard to get him. But if he's available, he's very anxious to do a Broadway show. And that's what we hope to do. And I'm going to go to New York and talk about that this week. Rock and roll uh, pretty well dominates the musical scene. Uh, Boy, does it ever. On a broad <laughs> scope these days. Now, you have written, uh, in my personal opinion, some of the most uh, beautiful lyrics uh, that match some of the most beautiful uh, music. Um, the one that comes to mind uh, immediately would be Midnight Sun. Now, this, this is quite a contrast, rock and roll and, and uh, yeah. material like this. Do you uh, think that the sweet music, the ballads, of course, they've never really completely left us, but they've been as scarce as the yeah. proverbial hen's teeth. Uh, do you think we're, we're going to see a, a return to uh, music uh, of our uh, youth and, say, the big band sound? Boy, I sure hope so. I think the big bands are kind of coming back a little as indications that that might happen. Harry James did a tremendous business at the place called The Showboat in New York. Buddy Rich has just successfully formed a new band. Stan Kenton has the best band of his career, as far as I'm concerned. Les Brown there is always in demand. The only thing about it is Herbie Alpert, with seven pieces, is outdrawing everybody with 30 pieces. Ted Heath's got a band, you know, he's got arrangements and four trumpets, eight trombones, and, and uh, Alpert comes along with his little Mexican band, and he 
cracks it open. It's wonderful. Well, I hope we get back to the ballads, because I really love the ballads. But I had my share of rhythm songs when I was a young man. I wrote an awful lot of things like, uh, it might seem corny now, but they were quite hip for those days. Things like uh, Fare Thee Well to Harlem and uh, Calling All Squares, uh, Air Minded Executive, Dixieland Band. Uh, accentuate the Positive. Accentuate the Positive and an uh, awful lot of rhythm songs I had. Uh, but as I got older, I wrote more and more ballads because I think I got better at it, and they make more money, too. <laughs> How do you account for the uh, success of uh, Winchester Cathedral? Well, I think it's a great tune. It's a very infectious little tune. Da -da 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 -da. You know, you hum it all day long, so <laughs> that's, that's all you need. And I think it's funny. It's kind of cute, you know, to imagine a guy talking to a cathedral. Say, you let, him, you know, you let me down because you didn't keep my baby from walking out on me. You uh, started out with Paul Whiteman, I believe. Now, uh, Bing Crosby did also. Were you together, were you with uh, Paul Whiteman at the same time? No, we, we, we were different, uh, with Whiteman at different times. Bing preceded me by about five years. He's a little bit older. And he had sung with a group called the Rhythm Boys. Harry Bass was one of that group. He was a pretty good songwriter, too. He wrote Mississippi Mud and uh, I Surrender Day, a few things like that. But I, I came in the Whiteman band after Bing had left, and I was the third set of Rhythm Boys, I think. We lasted about two weeks. But he kept me on to sing uh, solos and to sing duets with Jack Teagarden, and then I wrote a lot of stuff for the radio program. He had a uh, radio program then called Kraft uh, Music Hall. And I began to write stuff for it, little maybe five minutes, ten minutes a week out of an hour show. And I think that's how I earned my money. And then finally, I had a few song hits, so I went out to Hollywood to write songs rather than to sing. Thank you very much, and I'll uh, join you in keeping my fingers crossed that we'll uh, get more of your music uh, every day and uh, a trend back that way and toward the big bands. Well, thank you, Ralph. It's been a pleasure to be here. Our guest has been uh, Johnny Mercer, songwriter and native Savannian. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, Ralph Price reporting. The questions asked by Ralph Price are intended to elicit information and do not necessarily reflect his opinions or the opinions of the WSAV stations. Candid Opinion is presented on television each weekday at 7.20 and on radio at 10.45. This has been a public affairs presentation of the WSAV News Center. The preceding was pre-recorded.